We're glad to have you with us today on The Bible Speaks. I've got a, a, a message today I'd like to give to you on, Sir, We Would See Jesus. So I want you to open your Bible if you have an opportunity to or listen to John chapter 12, and I'll begin reading uh, in verse number 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Now here's the great truth. These folks come to uh, uh, here and, and they have a desire to see Jesus. So they find one of the disciples and they say to him, Sir, we would see Jesus. And so they're looking to meet the Lord. They're looking to uh, speak to him. They're looking to learn from him. What well, is a great truth in that? Now I want to take that thought. We, we live in a world that is in trouble. Uh, by the way, it's always been that way. Uh, sin uh, brings heartache and discouragement, and uh, it, it causes you to be uh, downpressed, and and it's it's a horrible thing. And ever since the Garden of Eden, uh, all of mankind, every society, has had the problem of sin. Every individual one of us do, and the only answer to that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you find that these folk. They come saying, "Sir, we would see Jesus." Now, there may be occasionally somebody that will hunt you and I up and hunt us up as Christians in our churches, and just know that they're in trouble, and they would say something similar to this or along the same lines that they need help. They would see Christ. But I want to take this thing a little bit different today. I, I want us to think that we have a world out here that is crying, that's hopeless, and they need the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are saying, Sir, ma'am, we would see Jesus. So the question I want to ask you this morning, and then we're going to dive into some verses, is what does the world see through me? What does the world see through you? Do they see the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, they ought to. We, we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Him. We're bought with a price. Uh, he is to have the preeminence in our life. And so there are some things I jotted down that the world ought to see Jesus in us. Number one, the world ought to see that Jesus is God. And so I want you to turn back, very familiar text in Gospel of John chapter 1 and uh, verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same as in the beginning with God. So we find in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Now in verse 14, I know that's Christ, but the Bible says that. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Does the world see God in us? You say, well, preacher, I'm just a... I'm just a human being. I understand that. But our actions belie to the world that we believe there's a God. We believe that there's a God that created us. We believe there's a God that blesses us. We believe there's a God that's in control. Do they see God in us? Do we show them that Jesus is God? I'm convinced that one of the things that's happening is we do not live as if we believe that Jesus is God. We don't think of it. We don't purposely rebel against it, but we do. And so the world is a hopeless world today. Say, we would see Jesus. Number one, they must see Him as God. Number two, not only must they see Him as God, but here in John chapter 1, I want you to look down to verse number 29. Uh, John the Baptist is baptizing. And uh, we, we find in verse 29, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, not only do we need to see Jesus and show forth Jesus as God, we need to show Jesus to the world as the Lamb of God, which takes away their sin. You see, there's a great truth here. Uh, sin will destroy you. It will take you further than you want to go. It will cost you more than you want to pay. Uh, it, it is the way of the transgressor is hard. 
is what the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 15. And so sin is destructive. And oftentimes uh, people recognize that they have sin and they recognize the trouble they're in, but they seem hopeless to get out of the situation. They, they, they know they can't go back and undo it, even though a lot of times I've had people tell me what they would give if they just go back to one particular day of their life and change some horrible thing that happened or if they could do this or that, but we can't. But thank the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not only God the Creator, He is the Lamb of God which has taken away the sin of the world and He's taken away our sin. Oh, that is something that we ought to show uh, the world is that we have a countenance that we've been delivered, that our sin has been taken away and that we know who Jesus is and then we can show them that the Lamb of God has died on the cross for their sin, was buried and rose again with great power, and He is the Lamb of God that can take away their sin. What's great truth in that? It is something that gives them uh, freedom from guilt and freedom from the pressure of Satan using their sin to grind them down. So there's great truth in that. So the world needs to see Jesus as God, but the world needs to see Jesus as the Lamb of God that taketh away their sin. Now the next thing I want to look at seems similar to that, but I want you to turn your Bible to Acts chapter 4. Now in Acts chapter 4, uh, I'm uh, going to pick up and begin reading in verse 8. Uh, Peter and John have been taken before the Sanhedrin, and they're having to give an account of what they're preaching and what they're saying. And so in uh, verse number 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him did this man stand here uh, before you whole. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. All right? The next thing that the world needs to see from us is that Jesus is God. He is the Lamb of God that has taken away the sin of the world. Oh, but He is the Savior. Oh, we, we need to see that Jesus saved us. I'm so glad that Jesus saved me and picked me up and set my feet on the solid rock of Himself and established my goings. I'm glad that He is the Savior. There is no other Savior. The world needs to understand that we as Christians, uh, they, they may think we're narrow-minded. They, they may think that we're very singularly focused, and we are. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other name given under, among heaven. The world needs to see this. It needs to be proclaimed by us that we have a great God that has taken away our sin because He's the Lamb of God. But not only that, He is our Savior, and He has saved us uh, not only from the power and the presence of Almighty sin, but what a great Savior we have. Not only do we need to see that He is God, the Lamb, and the Savior, the world would say, sir, we would see Jesus, but they need to see Him as King. You see, another thing that I'm convinced is we're not seeing Jesus as the King. Now, in the book of the Revelation, chapter number 19, I'll begin reading verse uh, number 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that set up in him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness did the judge make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, wide and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Listen. The world is saying, we would see Jesus. They need to see him as God. As the Lamb of God, it takes away their sin. That's the only name whereby they can be saved. But they need to see him as King of kings and Lord of lords. One of the things I'm convinced that we as Christians are not giving to a world that is 
hopelessly dying, saying we would see Jesus. Is they don't see that we see Jesus as our King. And we are as obedient servants to a great and mighty God. Let me encourage you today to have a goal. To be like Moses, that it would be said about you and I, the servant of the Lord. The world needs to see Jesus. It needs to see Him as God, the Lamb of God, the Savior, but as King. And they will only see that through us. The world is saying today, we would see Jesus. Let us pray for power to show them our great God and our great King. Thank you for listening today to The Bible Speaks.